Transformers 1 is releasing this year and you need to know what it's about. It's completely different to any Transformers movie we've ever seen before. It's got an entirely brand new cast of famous voice actors and we're finally getting a Transformers movie focused entirely on Cybertron. And in this video, I'll be going over everything you need to know. How the movie connects to Rise of the Beast, how the story explores the beginning of the Autobot Decepticon War, will it be CGI or animated, and how it could potentially be the best Transformers movie we've ever gotten. So what exactly is it? Transformers 1 is a prequel movie set before the events of both Rise of the Beast and Bumblebee, meaning it will explore and act as a full-length feature film to those beautiful Cybertron scenes we got a glimpse of all the way back in 2018. But rather than just being a flashback, it will explore the entire backstory of both Optimus Prime and Megatron, and how the devastating conflict between the Autobots and Decepticons started. Something that was teased way back in the original 2007 movie and other Transformers shows and media and it could possibly show how the Transformer planet got to such a dire and perilous point to where Optimus and the bots had to escape Cybertron for Earth and the Decepticons were left as the victorious powerhouse in charge of the planet, like we saw. Plus, since there's finally no human characters in the film, the Transformers themselves, like Optimus and Megatron, will take center stage as the main characters. Courtesy of TFW 2005, Transformers 1 will act as the origin story between a young Optimus Prime and Megatron on the homeworld of Cybertron, exploring how they ultimately fell apart on different sides of the conflict. Or in other words, we'll get to see a much younger, inexperienced version of Optimus, aka Orion Pax, evolve into the more battle-hardened, noble Autobot leader we all know and love. Whilst Megatron, who started out with more noble intentions in mind, ultimately regresses into the infamous tyrannical Decepticon leader he's known for. It's a story we've seen before in the original G1 cartoon, the Aligned Continuity, and even in the old Michael Bay movie comics, albeit each time slightly different. However, thanks to an interview with Lorenzo Di Bonventura, an executive producer of the film, we have a good idea of what version of the origin story will be in Transformers 1. In the interview, he stated it will focus on the relationship between Megatron and Optimus Prime, or at this time, they were known as D-16 and Orion Pax. Now for those of you wondering who D-16 is, D-16 is the original name Megatron was given at birth, specifically the Megatron from the aligned War for Cybertron and Prime universe, where he started off life as nothing but a worker and demolitionist in the mines of Chaos City, during the Quintesson occupation of Cybertron, before becoming the most famous gladiator the Transformers had ever seen in the combat pits of Cybertron. So with Deep on Ventura's comment, it's very likely the version of Orion Pax and Megatron we'll see in Transformers 1 will be heavily based on or influenced by these versions of the characters, which will be interesting to see, as D-16 was not only a skilled fighter, but also an emerging revolutionary figure in Cybertronian society. You see, the Cybertron both Orion and D-16 were born into was subject to an oppressive regime under Sentinel Prime known as the Caste System where the vehicle or alt mode of the Transformer determined their worth and role in society. But through D-16's battles in the pit, it gave him a new perspective on how unfair life had become on the planet, under the rule of Sentinel and his caste system. By the way, Sentinel is also part of the Autobot cast in Transformers 1, so we could possibly see how his rule all went horribly wrong, and why he ended up being such a different prime to Optimus. Plus, in pretty much all of his appearances, Sentinel or Zeta Prime have always been depicted as either a traitor or just a douchebag in general. It all pushed D-16 to actively challenge and demand reform to save the planet, or while renaming himself to Megatronus in homage to the Fallen Prime, then shortening it to Megatron, alongside creating his own League of Followers in the process, known as the Decepticons, who gradually became more and more violent as time passed, from killing their city's overseers and making Kaon their capital, to actively bombing parts of the planet. But right before all this chaos was unleashed, Megatron wasn't the only main figure trying to change Cybertron for the better. A young archivist from Icon City's Hall of Records, Orion Pax, had also taken a stand against Central Prime's caste system, but unlike D-16, he believed there was a better and more peaceful approach to do so. However, their differences didn't stop the two from becoming close friends. Ultimately, however, when the two confronted the ruling High Council, it was Orion who was chosen to become the next Prime and lead the planet into its next Golden Age. The final strike that cemented Megatron's dark path to all-out hellish warfare, and Orion's journey to the center of a dying Cybertron to receive the Matrix that transformed him into Optimus Prime. 
The full origin story does vary depending on whether you're sticking to the novels, games or TV show, although I will doubt it will change that much when we see it on screen in Transformers 1. It will still have the same main plot points. I will try to make a more in-depth breakdown about Orion and Megatron's origins, so subscribe to make sure you catch it. Yet when it comes to Transformers 1, we know Orion Pax won't be alone when he eventually has to face off against his former friend. Joining him in the movie will be Autobots Bumblebee, Elite 1 and Alpha Trion. Now, unlike in the Alliance continuity, Elite One and Alpha Trion have always featured heavily in Orion's origin stories, going way back to his very first in the original G1 cartoon, where both him and Ariel, after being destroyed by Megatron, were rebuilt by Alpha Trion into the new and improved Optimus Prime and Elite One. In fact, Alpha Trion wasn't only the pair's mentor. In most media, he was secretly one of the only surviving members of the original 13 Primes, so a pretty good mentor. If all of this is done right, Transformers 1 could honestly be the best piece of Transformers media we've ever gotten on screen. And what's even better is that there are plans for this to be the start of a whole natural trilogy of animated movies that will run alongside the current live action ones. Meaning we could get to see way more stories focused on the War for Cybertron leading all the way up to the events right before the start of the B movie, as well as the journey Optimus and the other Autobots we see in Rise of the Beast take to get to Earth. Perhaps in a similar vein to the storyline from Netflix's Transformers Earthrise or Transformers Exodus, where the Autobots and Decepticons in their fight across space come across and explore various different worlds, even ones with their own race and factions of Transformers. However, story is one thing, the voice cast is another, and unfortunately this will be the first movie that Peter Cullen won't be returning to his role as Optimus or Ryan Pax, and the same goes for Frank Walker's Megatron. But strangely enough, the voice cast for this movie is something I would have never really expected to have seen. Chris Hemsworth, the actor of Thor from the MCU, as well as Scarlett Johansson, the actress of Black Widow, will be the movie voices of both Optimus Prime and Elite One. To me, the choice is almost as random as when Chris Pratt was voice casted as Mario, but honestly, I can see it working. After all, Hemsworth is supposed to be playing a much younger version of the Optimus we saw in Rise of the Beast and Bumblebee, and we have seen other actors such as Gary Chalk and David Kay do a fantastic job of voicing their own unique portrayals of the character. I forgot to mention as well that we're also getting Keegan-Michael Key as Bumblebee, John Hamm as Sentinel Prime, Lawrence Fishburne as Alpha Trion, and Brian Tyree Henry as the voice of Megatron. An overall pretty solid voice cast. Yet moving on to Transformers 1's visuals, what exactly will the CGI in the movie be like? Cause I know after I saw those opening shots in the B movie, I just wanted to see a full hour, two hours of just Cybertron. And luckily, ILM, the same company behind that movies and most of the other film CGI, will be returning for this installment's animation. Yet, it hasn't been 100% clear whether it'll be in that same live action realism style. The only actual image that gives us an idea is this title art from the reveal of Transformers 1, where we get this gorgeous shot of the city on Cybertron that even has skyscrapers protruding from the sky. When you compare it to what we got in Bumblebee, especially the concept art, the designs are very similar to one another, although in Transformers 1 it looks way more colourful and lively, since it is before the start of the Autobot Decepticon War. You can even see what appears to be Megatron, Orion, Elite One and Bumblebee staring up at the city down here. When asked about the style of the movie CGI in his interview with Collider, the producer Lorenzo Di Bonaventura repeatedly referred to ILM's work on the movie Rango, which actually won Best Animated Feature at the 2012 Academy Awards, and as you can see, it has that lifelike CGI, especially in the environment and background, while still retaining a stylized animated aesthetic in the look of their characters almost like a middle ground between the styles from the live action movies and shows like Transformers Prime and Netflix's War for Cybertron. I'm even more confident that this is the case with how Scarlett Johansson, the voice of Elite One, commented on how amazed she was by how ILM had done the animation's texturing. We can expect to see Transformers Run release in cinemas worldwide on the 13th of September. However, if you live in the UK like me, unfortunately we'll have to wait a bit longer until October 11th. If you enjoyed the video, then leave a like, have a great day and don't forget to subscribe.